how many people read the policies that were on the app for this program? I mean, I did because I'm facilitating. So no, it's okay. In advance of the program? In advance of the program. I just read the first Okay, good, good. So you're ahead of most people. Got the documents. Okay. So the idea for this uh, session, we have about 40 minutes, is to look at policies. I can, we can choose a topic, and I don't think we're going to get to all six, and that's okay. Um, but maybe we'll, we'll choose ones um, that we want to focus on. The idea is to look at how they're written, tease out what the values that they're trying to get at, and then for us to uh, you know, take a critical look at, do the actual policies uh, bring out the values that they're supposed to be espousing? That's ultimately what we're going to be doing together. And if there are ways that we would suggest changes or tweaks to any of those policies that might make it more in line with what they're trying to accomplish, so maybe we'll, we'll be able to get there as well. So let me just tell you the topics of them, and if there's any one that people are really excited about, I can read it to you. Okay, the first one's about dress code. Uh, the second one is about inappropriate behavior. The third... The third one is about student citizenship standards and accountability. The fourth is about tefila. The fifth about drug abuse. And the sixth, hierarchy of offenses for Jewish high schools. Okay. Is there anyone that jumps out at people? I'll take a hierarchy of offenses for 2,000 Alex. <laughs> I can repeat that. I'll repeat that. <coughs> it's it's a little clunky. It's a little clunky. Okay. okay. Again, I'll, I'll go over to six again. Um, but you have a PDF that has all these on your phone. If you don't want to stare at your phone, that's okay. The first is dress code. The second one is inappropriate behavior. There's some overlap, but these are the headings that they are. The third is student citizenship standards and accountability. The fourth is, is tifilah. Fifth is drug abuse, and sixth is hierarchy of offenses for Jewish high school. Should we do a quick vote? How many people want dress code? Dress code? Okay. All right. Uh, inappropriate behavior? Broadly speaking, lots of stuff included in that. Okay. All right, this is good. A lot of people are voting. Student citizenship standards and accountability? Okay. Tefillah? All right. Drug abuse? And hierarchy of offenses for Jewish eyes. <laughs> <Okay. coughs> All right, so it sounds like um, maybe we'll start. Hopefully, we can do a few of these, but we'll start with the third one: student citizenship standards and accountability. And then it looked like Tefillah was in, was second place. So maybe we'll start there. <coughs> so let me read this to you in case you don't have this on your phone. But you're also you can follow along. It's Roman numeral three. <coughs> Excuse me. All right, this is how it's written in a real, a real Jewish day school's um, handbook or policy. The emphasis on citizenship at Jewish high school reflects our commitment to developing a school community that honors our school mission and supports each student's ability to contribute to and benefit from being a part of Jewish high school. Each area of school life contributes to building school culture that advances our mission. Citizenship standards at Jewish high school include, and there are five things listed here, Community respect and dignity, respect for tefillah, a sacred time and space. Three, timeliness and personal accountability, dress code, and integrity. Therefore, the citizenship of each member of our school community strengthens our positive culture. To support our students in striving to be their best, parents and faculty are expected to be full partners in teaching these values. Teachers will help students understand these expectations and use appropriate means to recognize and support our students' ability to improve in these citizenship standards. Students are required to adhere to these citizenship standards which are taught and tracked, communicated to students and parents regularly via email or phone calls, reflected in the student's course citizenship grade, and recorded on progress reports and report cards as a citizenship notation. The citizenship notation on progress reports and report cards is based on adherence to all five citizenship standards listed above and is expressed in a range from excellence to needs improvement. The following is a rubric of how the citizenship uh, notation is reported per semester. One to two formal notifications, excellent. Three to four formal notifications, good. Five and up formal notifications, needs improvement. In order to allow students the opportunity to own their growth and improvements, parents will be emailed after a student is notified and giving them the opportunity to improve on their own accord. Repeated violations of citizenship standards will impact the student's record, honor roll, merit scholarship status, grades, and leadership opportunities. Okay? Pretty detailed, pretty intense. Um, but why don't we start with getting at what were the values that you heard coming out of this? What are they striving for? Yeah. Students taking ownership over their behavior. 
Okay. So ownership of behavior. What else do people hear or see? Responsibility. Okay. Yeah, it's really hard to hear in here. I'm sorry. Um, but he said responsibility um, towards themselves and the community. Students beginning to practice that which we want to see them doing as they become adults. Okay. Yeah, I, I think it's interesting that they put a lot of the topics, uh -huh. right, as subcategories of like a general idea, which is student citizenship, right? Part of belonging to our community has certain standards, which include actually some of the other ones from other schools that are smaller pieces. Right. So I want to come back to that just to look at the five that were chosen. You know, what people think of that. You have the bringing in eliciting parents and various stakeholders. So you have parents, teachers are also, you know, driving to teach these values. And that partnership, right? Well, and on that point, there, it doesn't really just rely on the students to um, be responsible. It's asking parents to be responsible for the students as well. So it's almost giving the students like some degree of responsibility, but not full. collaboration so much in the um, meeting. I, I, saw, I saw the standards and the benchmarks, but I didn't so much hear the process of how do we get there collaboratively. Um, we need to hold the parents and the teachers accountable the same way we're holding the students accountable for that reason, and otherwise the kids are going to say what they always say, do what we preach. The list of five, I think, seems to strangely equate uh, things with each other that are not alike. <coughs> so, for example, integrity, which is a character trait that would be ingrained and somebody would be developing over time, with dress code seems very incongruous. Okay. Uh, and other examples as well. Great. Okay. We'll come back to that in a second. Let's see. Yeah, just a lot of observation, yeah. like, what are these notifications exactly based on? Like, it says if you get one to two formal notifications, like, what's the rubric for getting a notification? What yeah, what qualifies you to get a notification? And uh, who gives the notification? Is there an objectivity to it? Right. So there's more detail that maybe is the next page of their, right. their, their handbook. Building on that, there is no rule book. Just identify <laughs> what the rights right. are, but there's actually no rights. Right. And is it up to every teacher to decide what is showing respect or not showing respect? Right. Or, 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 right. Yeah. Yeah. Okay. Good. No, 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 Students have to be long and citizenship has to be earned. Can't just be taken for granted. And then you know, just people that are detained can't just take it for granted. One of the one of the questions I think is asked Bray is what values or spouse values or underlying assumptions is driving some of these things. And it's clear from the policy that it's basically saying that we want our students to be X. Clearly it's not happening organically, very right, culturally. So we now feel that we must hold accountable to these five things, including Fila, being a time, right, being a good citizen, with some sort of accountability with grades to make that happen. So I think that does bring out a certain value from reading this in the school that their belief in how student behavior is driven is by a system of accountability or grades or right versus I'm seeing here anything about like educate, educating them or student ownership or organic culture building. It's very like so I think this shows some of the values of what it looks like. It looks like they value kind of like a top down, very um, accountable person. So they I don't want to build on I think what both of you said. Right you 
you're saying that it came um, it came from a seemingly gap, right? They, right. They, they were missing the mark somewhere, so it seemed like they had to draft a policy. Maybe they were missing the mark on timeliness or dress code, and so they perhaps put it into this greater um, basket of shared citizenship. However, um, there, there isn't a discussion about the student voice here, like in terms of the um, buy-in of the students. Um, educationally, as you said, it seemed like they put together different integrities at the bottom, but it doesn't seem to um, look at the underlying values of what does it take to be a member of a shared community? How does, what does it take to have the student voice help um, drive the process or feel invested? Like the educational piece isn't, it's not layered there. Right, so the last few comments, I'll come, I'll come right to you, but the last few comments have kind of taken that next step in our conversation, right? Where we're now saying, not what was the school attempting to uh, give over, but how are we hearing it? You know, and how are we thinking maybe the students are hearing it? So whether that's a question about, all right, are these five equal? That was one of my first reactions too. I'm like, oh, and, th and that example, integrity and dress code, you know, let's lump those together because those are the same. Um, you know, so what are people, what are students and parents and even teachers hearing are some of the values that are being espoused? And is it over hearing there's a problem uh, that we're responding to? You know, and so I think, which is fine, let's, let's keep going with that in that direction. Yeah, I was going to say, you know, the beginning part of it is, it seems to me like about what can children become and their greatness and opportunity. And then the more you read into it, it starts feeling like compliance, which is not ownership and empowerment. And it starts feeling like lack of trust and control and micromanagement, which really strips away at children's opportunity to become great. And in response to the idea that it's a response to a problem, so if you were developing it to Novo, you would probably say that you want, I don't know, uh, respect for Tila and academic subject and uh, whatever other things that were important to you in your academic side, but it only addresses Tila and then other kinds of equipment, which I think is interesting. It seems like, well, something happens in Tila, but nothing happens in Tila, so therefore it's not list. Like it just, it's not, and I'm, I'm sure there was a very deep process that went to picking these five things, and it's a picket apart, but I'm just curious why you could only have why your equipment would only be as important as that. I hope this isn't from, I hope no one doesn't sound familiar to anybody. <laughs> <laughs> I, I just, could you repeat the questions that we're supposed to be addressing? Because yeah. I do feel like we're picking apart this school's yeah. thing a That's, little bit instead right. of, I, I'm, I want to make sure that we're. Yeah, well, the idea is this. Yeah, we, really, we, we really want to look at, um, I would say, what the school is saying they value. Okay. Right? and what is actually coming across. Okay. And then ultimately, would there be tweaks that we want to suggest that might help the school successfully convey the values that they want to convey, and to create the structures where those values are actually being enacted and not just espoused. That's ultimately the first So I would then build on that and say that if, if you're highlighting five specific things, such as integrity or community respect and dignity, those things are not very concrete and, and, and laid out. So I imagine there must be some sort of like onboarding or training or orientation to go into kind of what that looks like at the school. But if I'm looking at it, it's, just by looking at it from the from the policy, it doesn't seem very clear what the values that they're trying to get over are. I'm just wondering, is it, a little, is it confusing when the parents' values differ from the schools as far as level of stringency, then it's almost like when you're putting it on the shoulder to mirror the parents, if the parents' values don't necessarily line up exactly with the schools, it's like, well, how do you take ownership if you're getting a mixed message, the school holds one value, and the parents do something a little different, which may not be in line with the school. I think that's very confusing for children, and uh, I think it speaks to the importance of the school being super clear about what they value. Yeah. If you're onboarding a family and saying, Here's what we stand for. Here's what you have to partner with us on. It doesn't always happen. Right, but that's why a lot of schools don't say you should marry marry your parents' values. Like sometimes schools, like these are the values of the schools, and this is what we expect you to hold. I imagine that gets more challenging the wider the spectrum is of a community that you serve. I wonder about our tendency, and maybe it's the framing of this, to immediately jump to the second set, which is <laughs> all of the things that don't live up to the spouse value. Um, and frankly, how easy it is to look at these and be, you know, well, look at all the things they missed. Um, 
does strike me, skipping to that second one, which is lived values. Um, on one hand, it's very one-dimensional to me in a view of the continuum of complex student behavior um, and frankly human behavior in general. And secondly, I would say it seems as if the aspiration is zero. So the aspiration is no notifications. Um, and I know in the field of positive psychology, if that's your aspiration as a school, um, you're not hitting that mark by saying the best you can do is zero. You know, you've hit no notifications, you're the best we can produce. So, um, right, so they start with an aspiration of citizenship, right, building that, off of what you said, right, that's, that's, and then that's it's, what would right. be the legwork to ever get there? Well, let's have you stop doing all the things that you shouldn't be doing, and that's your threshold. So let's use that, um, and, and by the way, just to reinforce that, look at what the heading is of this. Student citizenship standards and accountability. It's like, you know, how are we going to make sure that you do nothing wrong? Without necessarily framing it as what could we strive for, or what would what would these things look like aspirational, um, as opposed to saying we're striving for no bad things. Um, just kind of that. But so so maybe let's use that to get to that third point. It's okay if we don't go super deep on this. We can take another policy and do that as as well. But how would you frame this, or how would you change the actual policy so that? This comes across the way we think these school leaders really want it to come across. Though we're not that, but we're guessing. Right? So, so what would you want to see in this policy so that there is that alignment between the espoused and the enacted values? Yeah. So along the lines of what Avi was saying, and, and by the way, there are three Montessorians in the room, so like, <laughs> um, you would start from the positive and you would go with, now you're going to be acknowledged for the things that you do get right, rather than notifications for the things that you didn't get right. Um, you know, like, especially if you're talking about citizenship, which is supposed to be something you want to cultivate that they desire to do it as its own reward. So you actually don't want to have extrinsic rewards and punishments for it. You want it to be its own reward um, as a value. Right. And this may exist somewhere else in the, poly the real policy, but a bit more descriptive. So you could be very respectful of Tefila and not like the way Tefila is conducted in the school. It doesn't leave for input. So some kind of feedback loop and also some kind of description of what the values that you're trying to uphold so that it's, it's a little bit more something to hold on to. Right, making it concrete, making it clear, it came up earlier, I think, also. You or she. I think a big thing, you know, just in, in building the school and having the school and running it is first coming from a place of like, who do we, how do we understand children? And if you come from a place of children are always becoming, and then and, and there's like endless opportunity in the child, then it comes to how do we guide them and empower them towards that? What do we set up in our environments to cultivate that within themselves? And then when they're not, how do we guide them away from that or hold them, you know, help them to feel personally accountable? So change in them is meaningful thing for them. So I think if it were to start from a place of like we believe children can be this, can become this, and then you know they will be guided by us in these ways towards their greatness and you know, there's going to be opportunities for leadership in these ways, and when they make mistakes, this is how we will support them through that. Obviously, we don't know how this list exactly came about, but if I had to guess, I would assume that these are five things that the school's, the school's struggling with, and that's why they included these five in their citizenship list, because there's not actually like a rhyme or reason to these five versus probably like many other things that we could think of. So just to piggyback on what you're saying, clearly there are many things that they could include that the students are probably doing already. That would be more like this is a reactive list. I'm, I'm thinking they need to make a proactive list. There's so many other areas of citizenship, maybe online behavior, um, honor code, whatever other things could go into citizenship and highlight the things that they're already doing well and paint a picture of a good citizen and try to make that the standard as opposed to this, which very much focuses on the areas of weakness, I think, in the school. Yeah. And I would 
also begin by asking, you know, when you when you work with a student and who has a messy locker, you also show them what a picture of a good locker, you know, a neat locker, like what what it is and what it isn't. Um, so I I would also work with the school on well, what what does good citizenship look like? You know, we have you know focus groups with teachers with students. What does it mean for you to be part of an inclusive community? What are the norms? What are the kinds of guidelines we want to see? How does this manifest itself? And through that, work together because, again, it needs to be. I wonder if the teachers feel as part of this as that they've been consulted and they've been a part of the process. Um, and I think that discussion could inform a very clear framing of the issue from, as you said, from a strength based. You know, here's our vision for building a shared, inclusive um, school community where everyone's valued. You know, diverse learners are valued and different teachers are valued. And we're going to approach this with a consistency that informs our education, that informs our staff meetings, that informs. So, you know, I think it could begin with the process and then also with a, a framing that, that, um, that talks about why this is a value why, and why this is a shared value. To speak a little bit to that, and I'll get your comment. The, the, the opening paragraph, not to totally slam the school, you know, the opening paragraph, they do talk about, you know, things that they're hoping for and that they're, but then when it gets very, very practical, it does feel reactive um, and maybe thinking about painting that picture of what they want it to do. Yeah. Right. I mean, I mean, Debbie used the terms to paint a picture, she used the terms vision, and I, I feel that that is really what needs to be the focus. Um, if the students could self-regulate, if they themselves aspire to be like that person, whether it's a role model in the school, or whether it's some of the students that are somehow picked as role models, because it's very hard to find role models. I think we all know that many students' complaints throughout schools, ourselves included, we would say, that teacher was two-faced. Right? Um, and I think that's really the focus, in my opinion. Show them good role models, paint them a good picture of every single standard that you want. They will reach there, because every single student will aspire to be that better person. They don't need all of their style the onish as a Our last comment on this one. I think the inclusion of the term citizenship in this section, rather than as part of the overall umbrella of the entire policy manual, throws off this section. Right? I think the general idea is we're talking about citizenship. That's the meta idea and the umbrella for what will be all of the policies. Here, trying to rewrap citizenship into these, I think, in some ways, that may seem like a minor tweak, but that reframes what these items are. They are all part of policies, as are the other sections, which are part of something broader than all citizenship. So, Actually, I think some of the terminology even expresses other values and actually shows that perhaps what they really mean by citizenship are doing these things. Okay, great. All right, thank you all. Let's uh, let's go to number two, dress code. Yeah, the second most votes. Um, I don't think we're going to read the entire thing together. Oh, sorry, the first one. Dress code is the first one. <laughs> oh, you were saying? Oh, I'm sorry. Okay. <laughs> Thank you. Thank you for correcting me. If we ripped apart that one, this <laughs> one, it's, it's all out war. <laughs> <laughs> I know. Which one? All out war, guys. Uh, it's okay. I'd rather Thank not get into dress codes. Okay, who authored these documents? All right, so we're going to look at number four, which is Tzvi Yeah, I think that's about it. Okay. Um, I'll read that loud because I know not everyone has this. Um, okay. It's not too long. All right, but again, now maybe just a little more attuned to what we're looking for. What are the values that we think the school is trying to address? And then looking at, like, does, do we think the school is, at, is successfully setting up the policy so that it does bring out those values? The goal of Jewish high school is to prepare its students for lifelong involvement in the three foundational elements of our religious system, Torah, Avodah, and Milat Chesed. That is, just as we are mandated to help our students develop the skills, knowledge, and interests which, which will serve as the basis of their lifelong involvement in Torah study, community service, and acts of charity and kindness, we hope to help each of, each of our students develop his or her continuing relationship with God through daily prayer. It, therefore, is almost axiomatic that students are required to attend both Shacharit and Mitzvah services in school each day. Our task is to help those students who find Tzvila difficult, as many do, to find the meaning that prayer is intended to have in their lives. And that's about Shacharit. 
Students are required to be in school at 7.40 a.m. and at their assigned chaperone service promptly at 7.45 a.m. Students who arrive after 7.50 will be considered absent. Students are only permitted to be late absent from Dominic 15 times a semester. More than 15, that's a lot. More than 15 latenesses <laughs> and absences a semester. <laughs> We've been set up. Yeah. <laughs> <laughs> More than 15 witnesses and absences in one semester uh, will result in suspension. After accumulating 15 witnesses and absences in one semester, a student will have to, to serve a two period in school suspension. Any additional witnesses and absences will result in a two period in school suspension for each absence. Students who continue to be late or absent despite suspension will be subject to more serious disciplinary action. Okay, Mimcha. Because Mincha is in the midst of our regular school day, there are rarely extenuating circumstances to excuse lateness to or absence from Mincha. Each excessive lateness or absence from Mincha, therefore, will result in a detention. How are we feeling about that? Inspired. <laughs> <laughs> yeah, I'm inspired. Yeah, yeah, yeah. Uh, okay, let's now... Uh, uh, let's let's see, see, that, go back to killing Ben for the Drug abuse? Yeah, right, right. <laughs> <laughs> uh, totally accidental. Okay, so um, let's go back to what the school is trying to do. Okay, in that, in that initial paragraph. Yeah. So they're trying to emphasize the importance, the critical importance of two Right, as part, I mean, it sounds like as really core to the identity of the student and what they want the student to be. Okay, other thoughts? The first paragraph is great. It sounds exactly like what you would want. And then the second paragraph just takes a total left turn to like totally all about consequences and it loses all the excitement that's in the first paragraph, which is the love and the lifelong davening and, and all of the things that we want to include. And it's just all about suspensions and discipline and, and all that. I'm trying to convey also that that there might be an underlying assumption from people that TLA somehow is different than Torah learning and Chesed, that the school is trying to convey the habits of equal importance to Torah without real Chesed and therefore it's a priority just like those. Good. What, is there a phrase or a line in the, first, in the first paragraph that jumps out at you as being a line that really conveys what the school values when it comes to TLA? Well, the last line of the first, first paragraph, I don't know if this is what you're talking about, but our task is to help those students who find to be a lot difficult, as many do, to find the meaning that prayer is intended to have in our lives. That is lovely, and um, it's, they're sort of hinting at some challenge that exists in the school. So the transition to the punitive stuff immediately thereafter um, is odd. But that sentence is really nice, and maybe there's a lot behind that that we just don't see in this policy. Okay, great. Any other lines? Yeah, ones that we like? Yeah, ones line. that really, you know. Yeah. We hope to help each of our students say, yeah. develop a continuing relationship with God through daily prayer. That's it. That's but right. but it's, it's hidden. I, I yeah, found the first paragraph. I like that God is there. Okay, I like God is mentioned. So now, which is, why, which is why the same way you can legislate a relationship, you can mandate it. For that very reason, the first paragraph seems to seems to contrast. Uh, yeah. Right. We hope to help develop. Those are the right words. If you're a student in this school, okay, so first of all, you probably even never read this if you're a student in the school, or maybe you read it once, um, but if you're a student in the school, what do you think you're taking out of your Tila experience, or the way that the school is engaging in, in Tila? If you're a student, what do you, what do you hear or feel? Robotic, they don't talk about Robotic, that. okay. Okay, based on the yeah. based on what we know. If they're living up to what they say in that paragraph, it might be an amazing experience. It says they each are supposed to report to their assigned shacharit service. Maybe there are ten right. shacharit services right. that are right for right. each kid. Right. I, like maybe. Right. <laughs> I'm telling that they're only be accountable. That feels guilty. Okay, so maybe you can, oh, they're, they're serious about this. I didn't only 15 it doesn't, right. it's, 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 it's it doesn't say. Because it's your assigned right. shopper. Yeah. <laughs> 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 I don't think they belong with each other. I, I understand what they're trying to do. I understand they're trying to regulate attendance. And I understand they're trying to, to bring the values that we want to have. 
I think whoever is reading it is probably the parents. So if you want to have the triangle of the collaborator, so they're probably talking to the parents right now. Uh, because you should know that 15 times there's going to be punishment. I don't think that the care that the children will even read it or even in any way be able to, to understand because the, the two do not sit well together. On the other hand, I do think that each paragraph is well written and in a sense to separate them and say, here's our value. Parents, do you share it at home? Can we bring you in? Can we discuss this? How do you do it at home? Can the children get involved in home? If you don't do the fila, does the child pray at home with dad? Do you go to a different minion in the morning? It might be earlier and you don't have the child on the the minion in the morning here. So that's a totally different discussion. And then there's a discussion about school attendance. You're late, that's what happens. Tweet on, no tweet on, doesn't matter. That's a school attendance, that's our school policy. But the values are, and there is a value in also being on time. Right? We all know that. That, that. If you serve as a role model for your child, that they're on time for future life. It's a life skill to be on time. Five minutes remaining, five minutes. So it sounds like what you're suggesting is the first paragraph is great. The second paragraph is great, but there's some stuff in the middle that's, that's, right. that's they, missing. They belong to two different sections. They, they represent two different values. One is the value of how we appreciate Fila, and one is the value of how we function in life. Are we on time? Can we be responsible? Can we be relied upon to be there on time when the session starts? Sorry. <laughs> I, I, I didn't hear that so much. Um, I didn't hear that, um, that you know, we value Tila and we will work with your child or we will work... No, it, it doesn't say, that's what I'm saying, it's missing. What? I'm saying... So it's, right, that we will work together to find, to make Tila spiritual and to be the core of what and why this is important. I think your point about time and respecting time and respecting, but it would be nice to frame that and a value that this is... Respecting other people and respecting time is a part of something we value. I also didn't hear parents. You're, you're part of, we're trying to create this together. I didn't hear the collaboration with parents. You can help us. You can help us towards um, towards achieving these things. Um, I think there's great potential for a school that wants to have here are your religious pillars or foundational elements. Um, it's a bit of a fine point, but I actually think they switched over from what I expected. I would have expected Avoda to refer to Tvila, yeah. but they actually first refer to, refer to it as other Avoda, as community <laughs> service. So I actually think reading that way, it's almost like a bait and switch. It's like we have these three great things. There's Torah that you learn, there's Avoda that you do, there's Tvila's Chesed that you do, and Tvila's beautiful and that's what we're going to work on with you. So if they wanted to, I certainly think Avoda can also be understood as Tvila, but I think if they had pillars in their school and could weave into, here are the different facets of our religious life, um, I think that could strengthen it more than kind of the way it's been crafted. Right. I, you know, I would add also, if in fact you take that last line even in the first paragraph, our task is to do this, you know, elaborating on that more, again, if you're a student reader or if you're a parent reader or a teacher even, you wouldn't, I don't know, it feels like all of a sudden we're being punitive. But if you can elaborate on more, I think there's some similarities to the last situation we were talking about, where painting this picture of here's what here's what it's going to look like, and here's when you're doing it well, this is you know, this is what we see. Um, it seems to be, I don't know about anyone else, but I'm like thinking, uh oh, like if I go look at our policy, yeah. <laughs> I'm wondering what how we would pick that apart and what we're really espousing. And, don't you know it? We can all go to our website. I don't know. Um, but I, you know, I think it, it is easy to pick these apart, but it does remind us, I think, about how important, not just how we frame things are, but even do our policies match? Do they match? You know, and, and is the goal here timeliness, or is it, like Yoni was hearing, the importance of Tula? You know, which one is that? Someone said it. Yeah. I was just going to also add the, the importance of having colleagues to share this. Please take two minutes to finish up your thoughts, world. and then we'll move on to the next part of our program. program. And then I just want to uh, summarize here. I mean, the same point as I said before, I mean, we're trying to use policies to enforce a value. I think education enforces a value. The moment people understand, parents, teachers, students, they understand something that it's good, they will be good. And you know, this whole theme over here is 
do the policies, enforce the values, etc. I'm not sure if that's completely the right question. So policies is the right thing to do. So the way I understood this, it's an example, meaning whatever your values are, every decision within the school should reinforce that. And so I, I think we probably all agree the way to enforce values is not through rules, um, and that there are bigger and better ways to do that. But we also want to make sure we're not undermining the values. And you can have policies that give very different messages than what you intend. I think that was I think that was the point here. I think the census wasn't involved in the planning. But I think the rest of the time that we had together, I think we'll broaden that. But the idea that alignment in all ways helps reinforce those messages to the students and to the parents.